Hey everybody, welcome to part two of the One Gauge video series where we go over all the features, the benefits, and an explanation of everything that One Gauge can do. So today we're going to be talking about the One Gauge Hub, go into a little bit more depth than I went into in the overview video, video and explain to you the different inputs, outputs, and the different options and features of the One Gauge Hub. So as you can see here, the One Gauge Hub comes in a 3D printed plastic box, at least for now, that's what it looks like. Um, that's subject to change, of course, in the future as we upgrade and modify things. Um, on the front is a USB port right here. This USB port's only used if you need to update the system in the future, if you change sensors or add or remove anything and you need any changes made to the coding of the system. You don't have to do any kind of programming. We send you the file. All you have to do is run a very simple program to upload it. The whole process takes about two minutes. Um, on the top and the bottom of the one gauge hub, you'll see all of the screw terminals. Now these terminals are the keys for getting your sen sensor readings into, and then of course back out of the system. So I'll go over uh, just real briefly what each of the terminal sets do. Um, again, we will send you when you order a full uh, quick start guide that will show you and label all of the screw terminals so that you know exactly where everything goes. Um, in the instruction manual on our website, you'll also find more detail, detail on exactly what each of these screw terminals do. So the first two screw terminals are used for the main power. You've got 12 volt in and ground. And then the next four screw terminals are used for additional power. So five volt and ground. And then if you need a 12 volt out for something like a tachometer adapter or a TPMS setup, um, that provides 12 volt power to that system. The first main six green screw terminals are used for analog inputs. So this would be for things like standard temperature sensors, um, the same types of sensors that you find on your stock vehicle. Um, it's used for fuel level inputs. You have one to two fuel level inputs depending on the configuration. Um, and it's also used for any kind of ground based indicators. So um, often a parking brake will use a ground-based indicator rather than a 12-volt indicator. Uh, the next seven terminals are used for digital inputs. So these are for things like digital pressure sensors and for the outputs of um, air-fuel ratio gauges or oxygen sensors. So an oxygen sensor typically has an analog output, zero to five volt, and that's what you would run into these screw terminals if you want to monitor AFR using uh, just the standard screw terminals. Um, the last few screw terminals are used for voltage inputs. Um, they can also be configured to use as turn signal inputs based on your setup. You flip the unit around. Uh, the first few, the first five are used for your indicator inputs. So that's 12 volt inputs. Um, you cannot plug, just a note, you cannot plug 12 volts into just any screw terminal on here. You will fry the computer. So there are a number of the terminals that are 12 volt protected to make sure that it doesn't overpower the computer and the indicator inputs are included in that. So you can run indicator lights from your check engine light, from your headlights. Um, if you could use it as a fan um, indicator input to tell you when your fan's on, the, um, the uses are pretty much limitless. So the next few screw terminals, you've got a five volt and the ground screw terminal, then you've got your RPM inputs. So your primary RPM input, your RPM one input, is for your tachometer signal. And you can also choose to use um, a variable speed sensor input. So if your transmission or your vehicle has um, a digital output for your speed sensor, you can run that into here. And rather than using the GPS speedometer, you could use one based on the actual signal from your vehicle. Um, the next number of terminals you have are inputs and outputs for screens if required. Most setups are not gonna use these. You've got a few five volt and ground terminals again, just to provide power to sensors. Then you've got four digital temperature sensor inputs. These are great for things like um, ambient temperature, um, just basically any kind of open air temperature, intake temperature that you might wanna measure. You can also use digital temperature sensors to get more accuracy for things like coolant temp, but typically an analog sensor um, provides more than enough accuracy for that. The last four screw terminals are again, extra five volt. Um, gr and ground inputs and outputs. So those are the main um, screw terminals. And then a number of things are gonna be soldered to your, to your circuit board based on the setup that you ordered. 
So this first module right here that's sticking up, that's your Bluetooth module. It has a red light that blinks on it when the system is on. It blinks quickly when it's not connected to anything. And then the blinking slows when it pairs with your device. Um, you can also add exhaust gas temperature inputs. So high temperature inputs, there are two of those on the circuit board. And then we have an expansion module that would be a separate unit that you could use to add um, up to eight typically um, exhaust gas temperature sensors. And then uh, beyond that, we have um, the GPS that would mount right here. You have your accelerometer, your odometer, um, and those, uh, your CAN bus and your SD card, those all solder to the circuit board. So it's best if you're thinking about using those in the future, it's easiest to go ahead and, go ahead and order those when you're placing the order for your system. That way we can solder them all on. Um, the last two things on the back here, you've got two white connectors. Those are used for the standard one gauge LCD screen connections. Um, that makes it very easy to plug your screen in and unplug it if needed. Um, so yeah, that's a rundown of the one gauge hub. Um, again, as I described in the video, in the overview video, you can mount this basically anywhere you want. It is safe to mount in the engine compartment. You can mount it on your dash, um, whatever works easiest and best for you. So appreciate you watching. If you have any other questions, um, I will post anything that I missed in this video or any clarification in the description below this video. So thank you so much for watching.